Hello, everyone. I'm Queen Cream, and as usual, we have more Mortal Kombat 1 news. The official website for the game has posted character bios for all of the nine characters that have already been revealed and shown off to an extent. So we are going to read them and speculate, speculate wildly. wildly about what they mean for the future of Mortal Kombat 1's story mode. So let's dive right in. Dive on in. So first up, we have God of Fire, Liu Kang. Having won control of the hourglass, Liu Kang restarted, restarted history. He neutralized the threats and dangers that had come before, creating a new era in which all beings would have the opportunity to find peace. I'm, I'm in my congenial era. But that peace is now threatened by an enemy that Liu Kang could have never anticipated. It will take all of his wisdom and experience to save not only Earth Realm, but all of reality. All right, let's unpack that, shall we? So, MK11, definitely canon, it happened, Kronika's real, there's like 8,000 bajillion timelines, and they all suck. So, you know, canonized, MK11, right there. Come on, Kronika. Also, threatened by an enemy that Liu Kang could have never anticipated. Girl! I am convinced I want it to be Onaga. Onaga would be great to see back in the new timeline, right? And who knows, maybe he is. But an enemy that Liu Kang could never have anticipated. I feel like that means somebody we know is gonna is a good guy is gonna go bad. I make some good girls go bad. Because butterfly effect, uh-oh, they're evil now. And there's gonna be a reason for it. Maybe it's Sub-Zero, like Bihan, I don't know, but an enemy that he could have never anticipated. Girl, they know how to they know how to quake an audience. Next up, we have Grandmaster of the Lin Kuei Sub Zero. As the Lin Kuei's Grandmaster, Sub Zero leads an ancient warrior clan in the defense of Earth Realm from external threats. For centuries, it has been their solemn task. But Earthrealm hasn't been threatened in generations, and Sub-Zero sees no point in limiting his clan to preparing for dangers that may never come. Under his leadership, the Lin Kui will come out of the shadows and fight for its place as one of Earthrealm's great nations. So it sounds like Sub-Zero is pretty much on a similar path to the old timeline, but the things that interest me are the fact that their sole purpose is to protect Earthrealm from external threats. And it even says Earthrealm hasn't been threatened in generations. So are they aware that there are multiple dimension, multiple realms out there? Do they know about Outworld and the Nether Realm and all that good jazz? Because it sure as shit sounds like it. So um, yeah, that's Sub-Zero. Revered Lin Kuei warrior, Scorpion. Like his cherished father, Scorpion it is dedicated to the Lin Kui and its defense of Earthrealm. When his father died, Scorpion was bereft, though he took pride in knowing that his brother, Sub-Zero, would succeed their father as the Lin Kuei's Grandmaster. But Sub-Zero's unprecedented moves to cast off the Lin Kuei traditional duties have frozen Scorpion's enthusiasm. Ha! Ah, I see. I see what they did there. <laughs> he fears that he may one day have to battle his brother for control of the Lin Kuei's legacy. So, I will not stand for the Xia Ryu erasure. <laughs> Just kidding. But where are they? Do they even exist? I don't know. Sub-Zero and Scorpion are biological brothers now. They're, they're, they share a father, I think. The wording is very weird. We still don't know if Scorpion is Hanzo Hisashi or Kawhi Liang. Either way, uh, I don't know. This is, I'm kind. I'm very curious to know what their storyline is going to be in this game because they're just. How are they just going to be brothers now? They've been enemies. They've been friends. They've been tea party buddies, and now they're brothers. Where is the timeline where they're lovers? 
princess of Outworld, Kitana. Kitana has one purpose in life, to aid and protect her older sister, Melina, as she prepares to rule Outworld one day. The steady-handed Kitana ignores the calls of those who advocate that she should replace her impulsive sister as heir. Instead, Kitana will defend the realm by fighting to make Melina the best empress possible. She will also fight to hide the dark secret that could end her sister's reign before it begins. So that was unexpected. I did not expect Katana to be like Melina's bodyguard, basically, but interesting purpose. Also, all this talk about Outworld, where is Edenia? The, from what we've seen, it looks like Edenia. Is it part of Outworld? Does it not exist anymore? Is it like a joint thing, city-state kind of deal? What is, I don't know. wild and also whose throne are they airing it's gotta be sindel right like i definitely think sindel is in this game and is going to play a prominent role in the story mode for sure i bet <laughs> i bet they're going to undo the evil sindel retcon and make her a real good girl again <laughs> i mean i'm here for it let's do it why not 21st century action hero johnny cage Right off the bat, 21st century, this is not 1992. We are not going back to the time in which the original MK1 started. This is a whole nother game ballpark situation. So, 21st century action hero, Johnny Cage. Like many stars before him, Johnny became addicted to his fame. He came to measure his self-worth by fans' adoration and to their praise of him on social media. But with his star now fading, Johnny is fighting an uphill battle to remain relevant. He joins the Liu Kang's, he joins Liu Kang's Earth Realm champions, hoping that it will provide his career and his fame a desperately needed boost. So that's another thing. Liu Kang is gathering champions, but we don't know what for. As far as we know, there's not even a tournament. We don't even know what the threat is. We just have seen like a big red ring in the sky. Is it Shang Tsung? Is it Onaga? Is it Bihan? Is it something, an entirely new character? Is it, is it, is it like a former version of Liu Kang? Is Liu Kang the antagonist and the protagonist? Who knows? Who knows what they're gonna do? Is it a new Titan? Uh, the fact that Johnny Cage is a social media pariah, hilarious. I'm excited to see how that plays out. He'd really be like, follow me on Instagram for this Mortal Kombat tournament. Next, we have Restorer of his family's name, Kenshi Takahashi. Once, one, once, one, one. I feel like the words once and one should not be put together next to each other in any sense. Once one of ancient Japan's most honored families, the Takahashis were decimated in battle. They lost everything including the emblem of their power, their revered sword, Sento. Those who survived and joined the Bakuto, a predecessor of the Yakuza, for its protection. Five centuries later, Kenshi is raised on the stories of his ancient family's exploits, detesting his corrupt Yakuza life. He pines to free the Takahashis from the Yakuza's grasp and restore their name. So it sounds like Kenshi is on a mission to, you know, restore glory to his family name. So some, you know, with this, with, he's trying to find Sento. So we're going to get a lot of Kenshi origin. We're going to see how he goes blind. We're going to see how he becomes one with the sword. Maybe we'll see T Takeda. Who knows? I mean, we don't know how much the timeline is going to jump around and whatnot. So yeah, Kenshi looks sick and I'm excited to see what his whole deal is. And how did Johnny Cage get sent out? Like in the trailer. Youthful warrior with dreams of glory, Kung Lao. Born and raised in the village of Feng Jin, Kung Lao has spent his life toiling in the fields. It has been an honorable life, if not a glorious one. Kung Lao's greatest fear is that his life will amount to nothing. He prays feverently that he will be called to do something bigger. His prayers are answered when he is asked to join the champions of Earthrealm. As a warrior fighting for his honor, Kung Lao knows that his victories will be long remembered. 
I wonder how the great Kung Lao is going to play into this. For all we know, this is the great Kung Lao. Who knows? I mean, Liu Kang is not buddy-buddy anymore. Liu Kang is the same authority that Raiden had. So roles are reversed here and that Liu Kang is gathering the champions this time around. Oh, girl, this one is spicy. Heir to Outworld's throne. Melina, born mere seconds ahead of her twin sister. It's like seven words and already we're like, pump the fucking brakes. They're twins now? Melina is the rightful heir to Outworld's throne. But even so, there are those who distrust Melina's impulsiveness. They whisper that Katana with her steadier hand should replace Melina as heir to the throne. As Melina fights for legitimacy, she hides a horrible secret. She is infected with the dreaded and lethal Tarkat disease. Were her affection found out, Melina would be forced into battle to save her throne. So, ooh, there's a lot to unpack there. We have completely shaken up what's going on with them because Melina is now the twin sister, older twin sister of Katana heir to the throne so there's I, there's clearly no Shao Kahn involved I just it wouldn't make sense for him to be in this position or for Liu Kang to like bring him back if anything I feel like Shao Kahn is going to be just Shao like a general private lieutenant sergeant whatever like some he's gonna be some soldier he's not gonna be the leader of Outworld second the fact that it's now a disease she's no longer some creation born in the flesh pits from Shang Tsung. She's now human, but with a disease, clearly by the Tarkatan people, if it's Tarkat disease, or do Tarkatans not even exist and Baraka is nowhere to be found in this timeline. I am, I need to know what's going on with Melina in this game. Oh my God. And the, speaking of her voice, a lot of people are like complaining about her throaty voice. A part of me now thinks that when she is not transformed into the the mouth and with the Tarkat disease and she's just has normal mouth she'll talk like katana but not like throaty like it'll be a proper melina voice i think so i think we're in for some some good surprises with with miss melina finally we have champion of earth realm raiden in the village of feng jin raiden was known for his kindness and his charity he was happy to spend his days tending to the fields as well as to his friends and family. So when he's asked to leave Feng Jian and become one of Earthrealm's champions, Raiden hesitates. But he soon realizes that to best serve his village, he must join them. As the threats to Earthrealm mount, Raiden must mature into the great warrior Liu Kang knows that he can be. Role reversal, baby. Raiden is the new Liu Kang. Liu Kang is the new Raiden. He's just... He's just be in this village with Kung Lao, clearly. They, they know each other, and yeah, he. I wonder how he's going to have his lightning powers, how they're going to explain that since he's no longer a god. Um, yeah, this is, this, is, this is crazy. We are really shaking it up here, and honestly, I am excited because that we MK11 Aftermath ended by basically giving the entire franchise a blank slate to do whatever we are restarting history Liu Kang is the only one with knowledge of former timelines and, and Kronika and and all of that that happened so this is a brand new brand new story and I'm excited because that means Mortal Kombat could be around for the next 20 years as it's been for the last 20 so I am so stoked they've already announced that we have got a character gameplay trailer coming that's going to have new reveals and cameo reveals in it we just know it's coming soon. It's currently 4th of July, so we don't know what soon is, but hopefully it is like today because I'm ready for some new information about this game. These bios clearly reveal a lot and I am just so excited to see where it goes. Uh, what do you think about Mortal Kombat 1? Are you, are you stoked? Are you still on the fence? Let me know down below and come join the conversation with me because I'm covering it all the way up until release, baby. I am excited to get my combat on. So until next time, finish her.